Hello, I'm glad that you're here. If you haven't been following along, me and my friend Blake recently went on a trip to the West Coast, and at this point we were on our way to... Right, so we left off at leaving Lake Isabella, which meant we still had about three hours to go in the car until we were at the park. And to ensure we didn't double the drive time again by getting distracted by just about everything, we laid down some ground rules. One, no pulling over for dumb things. If we were stopping the car, it better be for something sick. That rule lasted for about 10 minutes. <laughs> Breaking rules. What you taking pictures of, booty? Now on to rule number two. If we were going to pull over, take pictures with the 35 millimeter. That way I wouldn't slow everything down by setting up the Mamiya. That rule lasted until literally the next stop. I can't believe I busted out the Mamiya for this one. And I have no idea what Ektar did to these colors. Frankly, I just think cows are dope animals and I like photographing them, so I suppose it couldn't be helped. But from here on out, it was all business, all the way to Sequoia. We only pulled over for a f***ing road sign that you could see literally anywhere in America, and we also stopped at a lake, but it was so overcast that I couldn't get any decent lighting for a good landscape shot. And then after that, we stopped for an hour to get food and beer, so uh, yeah, it, it took us a while to get there. But not before long we saw the promising image of the Gateway Lodge, which sort of unofficially marks the approach to Sequoia. Just a few more miles and we were inside the park. The only problem is those clouds that made the lake shot suck were also in the park. So even though we were surrounded by all this beautiful scenery, it was rather difficult to get beautiful pictures. I realize I've pretty much only shown you not great shots so far, but don't worry, they do get better as we get further into the park. One thing I didn't realize about Sequoia is just how high up you have to drive before you start seeing the big old trees. An hour later and we finally pulled up to our first parking lot to see the General Sherman tree. And luckily for us, there was a really long trail to get to it. Okay, I know I'm saying what literally everyone that has ever visited this park has said, but these trees are huge and not to mention f***ing incredible. We ended up wandering around for two hours before we even went to go see what we had parked for in the first place. At this point, we were high up enough for all those clouds from earlier to just become fog, and all of the various ravens in the forest made it feel like we were literally walking through an environment in Skyrim. But the park service didn't appreciate us killing all the elves. Okay, I'm sorry to show you guys a vertical iPhone video, but it's vital to the story. Did that bird have an omen for us? Spooky. That bird did in fact have an omen for us. At this point, I completely messed up loading the Pentax or the film advancer just didn't end up latching. So instead of taking 36 lovely exposures of the sequoias, I exposed 36 images onto one frame. 
So you've heard of a double exposure, but how about a sextragubal exposure? Which according to Tech Talk News is how you would actually say that. I seriously cannot understate how horrible of a feeling it is when the counter hits 36 but the film doesn't stop. So point being, there was no more 35mm shots in this area. However, on a more positive note, I did immediately go and take this, which may be one of my favorite photos I have ever taken. Now, I bet you're wondering, how big is that tree really? Don't worry, I put a standard reference Blake in there for scale. What'd you find, Blake? The country of a wreck. It's not a wreck, it's a rock. <laughs> Not that I mean for this to turn into a smarter every day of Veritasium video, but like, like that's so cool because that's all just basically bark that prevents it from burning to death. So at this point, I'd show you all my pictures of the General Sherman tree, but I took them on the Pentax, so we're moving on. When we got back onto the main road, the clouds had really come in, which meant it was time for me to get more of my signature moody forest pictures. I was actually pretty happy with how these turned out. The green of all the fresh growth served as an incredible contrast to all of the burnt and dead trees around it. I thought it was a really unique scene that I was just super lucky to be at at the right time. I mean, this is totally beautiful and peaceful and spooky and insane. It's so cool walking through all this because like literally the entire forest floor is ash. It's kind of crazy. Prius is like literally 30 feet away from me and you can't see it. It's so cool. Well, that was all we could pack in before dark, and considering we didn't know where we'd be sleeping that night, we decided to head out and save the rest of the park for the next day. Luckily, the River Inn was waiting just outside the park for us. We got the last room left in the place. We were fairly worn out, so it was time for a little whiskey and a little sleep. Well, if there ain't no pub around, you, you bring the pub to you, am I right, my brother? Okay. Good coffee time. Issaquah National Park time, baby. This is what happens when your hair is too fucking weak and frail and you have long hair. If I don't put product in it, I look like one of the Three Stooges. How f***ing interesting. <laughs> the Sequoia boys are back at it again. The Sequoia boys in the something game. <laughs> what the f***? I don't know, I was going for like... Well, another day, another opportunity to scream into the abyss because your 35 millimeter isn't behaving. Casual 38 degree morning hike. Yeah, I didn't plan for this. <laughs> yeah, well... It'll be okay. We decided to go on a hike at Round Meadow, which had a field full of frost and sequoias, making for some pretty pleasing scenery. As pretty as this place was, the cold was absolutely wrecking us, so we pretty much ran back to the car to get warm. But then something caught my eye. So Russell had a hunch that this was going to be a cool overlook when I was going to get in the car and get warm, uh, but this is worth it. Oh! Holy f With 
newfound energy and a little extra blood flow in the heat, we began to drive to Kings Canyon, Sequoia's neighboring national park. Not before long, we made it to the visitor center, which had surprisingly great breakfast. <laughs> this guy has been ride or die with us since we got out of LA. Bam, cleanest transition you've ever seen to us being in the Grant Grove. As it turns out, forests named after Union generals are usually pretty banger. This place was awesome, even if my light meter did do me a little dirty on some of the shots. This thing is huge. This one grouping of trees really caught my eye, but I think I overestimated the dynamic range of film. I don't know why I like this shot so much, but I think it's just the lighting conveyed the whole sort of mystical feeling you get walking around the grove. And to conclude our time at the Grant Grove, a Merry Christmas from the nation's Christmas tree. We drove around a little more looking for sights when a lovely couple told us about Panoramic Point with a trail to a firewatch tower. So naturally that's exactly where we went next. Panoramic Point really was a beautiful spot. We were just battling some midday light. I'd be lying if I said anything particularly interesting happened on our hike, and I'm going to blame the altitude for some of these compositions. Right now on the top of a ridge, 7,800 feet off the ground, or sea level, I guess. That's hot. I've said it before, but the problem with being in a beautiful place is it's too easy to take pictures of literally anything. Today's one of the good days. <laughs> bye bye, sad thoughts. Several miles later, we finally made it to the fire tower. And uh, it certainly was a fire tower. This was one of the few shots on Retrochrome that didn't come out horribly underexposed. Normally I'm all for showing you guys my mistakes, but I doubt any of you wanted to see a majority of 24 images that looked like this. I also think what Retrochrome does isn't well suited for the forest. I'm a big fan of showing off the greens, and Retrochrome removes them like a madman hell-bent on ruining St. Patrick's Day. F you lucky charms. I couldn't tell you why some turned out better than others since I metered the same way for every shot, but I guess expired film just behaves a little unpredictably. As we hiked on, the sun was starting to get pretty low, which meant I could really start getting some of the compositions I was excited for, like this one. Ektar finally did me right on this trip. I also got an alternative shot that I like as well, but it just isn't as strong of a composition. As we started driving, the sun was getting super low, and further on down the park, I was practically begging for a pull-off so I can squeeze out one last composition. Luckily, we made it right on time, and I really love it. The colors and the silhouette of the tree just feels really peaceful. And with that, it was time to head on to our next destination on the road trip. Well, that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you've been enjoying the series. I know this bit didn't have as many successful compositions, but I think it's important to show every failure alongside every success. I also started digitizing my pictures in a new way, so let me know if you guys like the difference or if you even noticed at all. I hope you have a great day, and until next time.